It is August of 2018, and you can just feel it on the streets of Cleveland, Ohio. Optimism and excitement about the Cleveland Browns. It's preseason football tonight. It's football on a Thursday tonight on Fox. The Philadelphia Eagles and the Cleveland Browns are now welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. Troy Aikman's coming right up. And welcome to our 25th season of covering the NFL on Fox. The world champs are in town. The last time Troy and I and Aaron and our entire crew saw the Philadelphia Eagles, they were taking apart the Minnesota Vikings in the NFC Championship game. They would obviously go on to win Super Bowl 52, beating a heavily favored New England Patriots team. So much to talk about with regard to Philadelphia. But right now, as I welcome in the Hall of Famer, Troy Aikman, I want to talk about Cleveland. I mean, this is fun. There, there's a lot of excitement here. They've got two quarterbacks, not one or none. And we're going to talk about that a lot here tonight. Well, it's pretty crazy. I mean, they've won one game in the last two years, and yet there is this optimism and excitement. We've been in town here for two days. Everybody's wearing their brown stuff. They're cranked up for here this 2018 season. And certainly Baker Mayfield has had a lot to do with that. But I really think when you look at the job that new general manager John Dorsey did this year, yeah, they had a lot of picks. But they apparently have made the most of them, and we'll certainly find that out over the course of the season. It's a far different roster than they had a year ago when they went winless, and I'm excited to watch them. I think that they're on the verge of doing some really special things. Their starting quarterback is Tyrod Taylor, and for more on number five, let's go down to the field and check in with Christina Pink. Hey, Joe. Well, you know all that hype about Baker Mayfield? I can tell you that Tyrod Taylor hears none of it. This guy is all football all the time, and he's focused on what he can do to make this team better. He's showcased adaptability throughout his career. He's also accurate and never turns the football over. But in his eighth season, he is now playing in his seventh different offense. This one is unique. It's player friendly. It allowed him to do some things he hasn't done before. He says with time and effort, he can learn anything quickly. Now over to Aaron Andrews and the Eagle. Christina, thanks so much. Nick Foles missing the first preseason game with neck spasms. And of course, he was pulled last week because of a shoulder strain. I asked his head coach, Doug Peterson, why risk it and play him tonight? He joked with me and said, well, did you watch last week's game? Foles admitted I was rusty. He said he needs to get into some rhythm tonight. Peterson telling me during pregame, not worried about his decision making, just need better execution from him. Joe. All right, thank you guys very much. And we get set for kickoff in the Spanish language broadcast is available on both Fox Deportes and by utilizing SAP on our broadcast. Browns will start with the football. They have started this preseason one and one. They have a date at Detroit next Thursday. They open at home here against the Steelers and there's the Super Bowl winning head coach. Doug Peterson who by the way played quarterback here in the year 2000 for the Cleveland Browns but Peterson is now I think rightly saluted as one of the better new coaches in the NFL and the job he did and we'll go through it as the game goes on without a starting quarterback without a starting left tackle without a big special teams player without uh, other pieces of the puzzle was remarkable winning it all last year. well there's no doubt about that Joe and Doug Peterson I mean he changed the way a lot of people now this year are going to look at the game certainly the decisions that are being made the way that he went for it on fourth down good for him this will be Jabril Peppers out of Michigan and he cannot make the 20 Peppers a uh, first round pick a year ago from the Michigan program and here comes Tyrod Taylor now there was some discussion all week because of HBO's hard knocks is it Tyrod for people like us or is it Tyrod he said just call me Tyrod I don't want to answer that question all season long but he's a two time pro bowler and like Christina said it'll be fun to see what he can do when he's able to open up the offense a little bit he's played for defensive head coaches his last two times up in Buffalo nice move out on the outside that's Landry what a good move and he gets 11 for a first down for the Browns you talk about Tyrod Taylor and, and now they are going to the hurry up style offense he did a little bit of it in Buffalo not a lot but he's very good at it and he likes it Handoff is to Carlos Hyde, the former 49er. 
He gains one and we'll see if they slow down enough for us to set the offense up front. They've made big changes and that's because Joe Thomas their 10 time pro bowler left tackle has hung it up so that has forced changes across that offensive line and there are the backs and receivers. We'll see plenty more than that group. On second down this is Hyde and well played out on the edge by Nigel Bradham and a loss on the play for Cleveland of five yards to bring up third down and long in this defense which had 31 takeaways a year ago they're good up front they're deep up front they're good at the linebacker level they've got a ton of defensive backs Howie Roseman their GM has stacked a ton of talent on this defensive side. They got a lot of depth like you say and they've got a lot of returning starters and so for a guy like Jim Schwartz now third year as defensive coordinator he's got a group that is very familiar with his defensive scheme. Third down and 14 passes underneath caught by the tight end David Njoku. He gets three and it's fourth down and a good start for this Philly defense. There's a guy who according to Jim Schwartz the defensive coordinator for Philadelphia has made the biggest leap from a year ago there's Jim and talking about Derek Barnett now in his second year a first round pick from Tennessee. Well yeah Derek Barnett last year really pretty much just had an outside speed rush worked on some bull rush moves and camp never really could quite perfect that but he has really grown as you would expect as most players do going into their second season. Here's DeAndre Carter dangerous return and well covered downfield. Flag on the field. T.J. Carey was there for Cleveland. Nothing on the return. Jerome Boger is our referee, and we'll hear from him for the first time. During the kick, holding, receiving team number 50. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the kick. Philadelphia keeps the ball. First down. Timeout. A hold against Leroy Reynolds. The Eagles will have it for the first time tonight when we come back. You remember how to do this? You okay over there? You feel like we've settled down and now we're ready to rock? Hey, feeling good. You know, I don't work multiple sports like you do. <laughs> it's been a while. Welcome back to work. <laughs> From the 17, here's Nick Foles, MVP of Super Bowl 52, looking for a little rhythm in this offense, and he finds his tight end. And that's Goddard, who is a second round pick and should be a big weapon for Philadelphia in 2018. And this offensive line is one of the best in the game. They don't have Jason Peters out there tonight, but he's getting ready to start the season. Yeah, he'll be just fine. He's a 15 year vet, and they are not going to roll him out here during the preseason. And you know, obviously, they lost a heck of a player last year when he went down, but, but Vitae stepped in and and did a nice job. I think this is the best offensive line in football. Handoff here is to Wendell Smallwood. And if there's opportunity for any group here tonight for Philadelphia, the world champs, it's at running back. They're without their top three running backs, and Smallwood would like to make an impression here tonight. Same for Josh Adams, Matt Jones. Somebody's looking to take that number four spot when the season starts here in a couple of weeks. Well, and you'd think Wendell Smallwood that, that he would have a leg up on everybody because he's been in the system, but uh, a big opportunity with, with some of these guys ahead of them not playing again tonight. Second and seven, pass is caught, and that's Zach Ertz, one of the best in the game. It's about a yard short of a first down as we look at this defense for Cleveland. And yeah, they didn't win a game last year, but the defense took some steps forward from their one win season the previous year and you see that 53 in the middle a pro bowler Joe Schobert a great athlete and he and Christian Kirksey very good at linebacker well, they're solid that, those three at the linebacker position are, are awfully good it's a heck of a trio they've revamped this secondary and after last year they desperately had to do that. Third down and one. Here is a toss. That's Smallwood, and he's got a first down. So Wendell Smallwood gets the first crack at it tonight. And the third year pro from West Virginia gets four and a first down. You take a look at the blocking and the, the job that's done. And Lane Johnson, number 65, he gets out and 
is able to get Smallwood out on the edge. And you know, Lane Johnson is like some of these other guys, very athletic. He had a Pro Bowl year last year, was exceptional. I like this group, and when you look at the other problems that Dallas has had in their offensive line, I think right now there's no question the Eagles are the best. Here's a pass caught by the tight end again. Ertz made the last two grabs for the Eagles, and this one good for seven. And a player is down. That's Denzel Ward, who was the number four overall pick, grabbing at his left low back. Let's take another look. Played at Ohio State, grew up about 23 miles from here, getting a 10. See Denzel Ward able to pop up, get off the field under his own power, and now into that blue tent he goes, where it's second and three on the field behind him. Eagles number one offense has yet to put up any points this preseason. Smallwood again, nice cut. And he spins with a first down inside the 45, a gain of 10, and Miles Garrett, the number one pick overall two drafts ago, is there to make the stop for the Browns. It's a nice start by Philadelphia on the ground and their ability to run the football. And you look at last year and the things that they were able to do running the football, it was pretty impressive. They were third in the NFL in rushing offense and, and one of the big reasons for that obviously we've heard so much about the run pass options but what that meant was most of the time the quarterback is deciding when they're going to run the ball and when the numbers are in their favor offensively and as a result they would pile up some pretty good numbers Jason Kelsey was injured on that last play dangerous throw and it's broken up by Terrence Mitchell Almost had a pick as he stepped in front of Gibson. He just laid on the throw, and if Mitchell was playing the ball as much as he was trying to play the receiver, he would have had a great opportunity of undercutting that pass. But you see the hitch route on the outside, the ball's late getting there. This is very fortunate. D five three. Isaac Sayamalo is taking over at center for Jason Kelsey. Here's Smallwood left side. Nothing there wrapped up at the 45. And a loss of two. Let's go back to the play that injured Jason Kelsey and take a look at number 62 right in the middle. He's right in the middle of your screen. He's a heck of a player. And we've seen two guys now get banged up here in the early going. And there's so much right now of these training camps for for all these players and these coaches just trying to be smart keep guys healthy and get them to week one it's a it's a hard balance to try to find for these coaches and players Sam Alu has struggled with snaps in the shotgun a good one here on third down pass is caught and a nice tackle out on the edge Gibson on the catch a gain of seven but a strong tackle by Mike Jordan to bring Shel up fourth down yeah and Shelton Gibson is is a guy who has shown some good things this year last year he was primarily a special teams player and and yet he's done a good job with kickoff returns and comes up big there on that catch Mr. Fourth down there's Mr. Saturday night there's Riverboat Ron and there's Mr. Fourth down here with Doug Peterson going for it on fourth and five. No. No, Ron. Foles unloads. Pass incomplete, but a flag is down. Two flags. There are separate fouls on this play. Garrett was in and laid a hit on Foles. They threw a flag, but then a flag in the secondary as well. They get a low hit on on Nick Foles in the pocket and it looked like there was contact at the top there of the two route fouls on the play one by EC pass interference defense number 22 holding offense number 72 these fouls all set replay fourth down so Jabril Peppers is guilty of a pass interference And the 
hit on the quarterback, so we just do it over. Well, Halapuli Vati, Vitae, the left tackle who I was talking about earlier, who filled in for Jason Peters when he got injured. You know, he had a nice season last year, but last week he really struggled. He got beat pretty good, and, and, and he gets called for the hold on that last play. So not a good start for him tonight either. Fourth down and five. Looked like there might have been some early movement. No flag. The catch is made and a good tackle by Peppers. As he brings down the receiver, the tight end, Zach Ertz. Short of first down yardage. And with this tackle by Peppers, the Browns take over. No score. This is a view from the camera on the hat of umpire Bill Schuster, who threw the flag on the hold on Vitae right there on the edge. One of two fouls offsetting on that previous fourth down play, and then a good tackle by Jabril Peppers on Zach Ertz to deny the first down. So the Browns have it for the second time tonight. Handoff is to Carlos Hyde. Cat around the edge and a big run by the former 49er after going around Jalen Mills. He gets 33. Well, they're going to bring out Austin Corbett, the rookie out of Nevada. He's going to pull the left guard, and you see the shotgun run, and he kicks out enough on Bradham, and then he makes a miss for a nice run there. Now Nick Chubb, 35th pick in this past draft. Out of Georgia takes over, gets it, bounces. Inside the 15, out of bounds near the 11. And two big runs back to back by Hyde and Chubb. This one for 21. Well, Derek Barnett, we were talking about him, how much he's improved as a pass rusher. He, hit, he has an opportunity on Chubb in the hole and is unable to make the play. Ronald Darby, he also comes in up to fill the hole. Jim Schwartz has a nice defense call. And both times now, the Browns have been able to get outside. Taylor keeps it, drops it off. This is the tight end with a leap and out of bounds at the one. Najoku, who led this Browns team with four touchdowns last year after being a first round pick out of Miami, was a yard short with this leap. This guy has a real opportunity to, to have a heck of a year. And Last year he was third on the team with 32 receptions, but he's had a pretty good camp. He's had some times when he's had problems with drops, but in these preseason games he has played well. He's come up with some nice catches. He's a heck of an athlete. This could be a breakout year for him. They gave him 10 first and goal back of the end zone, and Landry's looking for a flag, doesn't get it. It was a collision. Sidney Jones was a part of that. He had the coverage. And the collision with Mills. Yeah, they're trying to run a, a natural picking action. I think it's a good non call, but you, know, you see the contact is the outside receiver is going to the middle and runs into Jarvis Landry. And, and, and he was another good pickup. We talked about the draft picks, but they made the trade for Jarvis Landry, and, and John Dorsey brings in a talented guy who led the league last year in receptions. Taylor Keith Whoa. throws and just tried to gun it in there. That's Ratley. Yeah, there was, Damian about, Ratley had about, no chance. There were about five bodies right there where the ball was. This is not how you draw it up, boys. <laughs> so now third down and goal. With the ball sitting at the one. Ratley, by the way, a sixth round pick out of Texas A&M. You like him. They love Landry. In the slot right side. Taylor floats it, more contact, no flag, and it's fourth down. Landry got hung up with Mills for the second time on this possession down close, and it's fourth down. Well, they come right back with the same play that they, they ran there on first down and, and with the same results. So they get down here inside the five and three straight passes and, and unable to make a play to punch it in. All plays from the one, and they're going to go for it on fourth and goal. 
Taylor protected, pulls up, in trouble. Incomplete, and a big stop by this Eagles defense. And now each defense has made a stop on fourth down, and Tyrod Taylor is hurt. Keep an eye on that. Eagles ball from their one when we come back. Well, welcome back to First Energy Stadium. This did not look good for Tyrod Taylor. Keep an eye on his left wrist when he goes down. And he knew right away that, that he was in pain and somehow able to just get up and get over to the sideline. I don't know how you can watch Hard Knocks and not love this guy. But all the talk about Taylor or Mayfield. Well, who knows what the prognosis will be after that for Tyrod Taylor. Kelsey back in there for Philadelphia. Handoff here is to Smallwood and on first down from the one he gets it up. Just across the four. Tyrod Taylor he's gotten the, the hard road into the NFL. He was a sixth round pick went to Baltimore. He backed up Joe Flacco. He got an opportunity then in Buffalo last year as you said he leads them. To the postseason, first time Bills have been in the postseason in quite some time. And what do they do? They then trade him here to Cleveland, and he gets to Cleveland, and they have the number one overall pick, and they draft Baker Mayfield. And he's been asked a lot of questions about how long he's going to be the starter, how long he's going, you know, how he's handled everything. And he's the first one in the building, he's the last one to leave. The coaches rave about his leadership. I hope the injury is not as bad as it looks. Falls, stumbles, somehow gets up, gets rid of it, and completes. Oh, boy. What a play by Nick Foles <laughs> as he finds Shelton Gibson. And we'll see if the Browns want to look at it and see if Foles was down as Nick tries to hurry it up. He's down and touched. That should be a safety. Oh, that's and an easy a challenge coming from Hugh Jackson. Mike Pereira is with us in the booth. Thank goodness. Did you see the same? One for one so far, and so am I, by the way. I'm going to win this first one. That's a <laughs> tough play to call. Jerome Boger didn't see the knee uh, still on the ground when he was first touched, but yep, easy, what should be an E reversal to a, uh, to a safety. All right, we'll be back in one minute after these messages from Geico and Fox College Football. Give you another look at what happened in the end zone. Foles did all he could. Really tripped himself. And then gets tapped with his knee down by Miles Garrett for a safety. Hey, Mike, these are going to get harder for you, by the way. <laughs> really? I, I was thinking about adjusting. quitting right now. Second <laughs> end zone, resulting in a safety. Please reset the game clock to five minutes, 19 seconds. Cleveland is not charged a timeout. So that kid, Miles Garrett, who had seven sacks after missing the first five games because of injury and then a concussion, is lightning fast, and he got in there and tapped Foles. Meanwhile, here's Tyrod Taylor. From all of us to him, hope he's okay as he goes to get looked at. Yeah. The locker room. Well, he should, like you said, he sure ran off the field like he knew something was seriously wrong and, and you know, go in and get x ray and check it out. And I guess we'll get a chance now to, to see Baker Mayfield and, and maybe it's a moot point as far as who's going to start week one, depending on what those x rays show. It might be Baker Mayfield's team. There's so much to talk to Mike Pereira about. We'll get into some of that tonight. Peppers from just inside the 15 runs into a teammate and is knocked down at the 34. And Baker Mayfield gets an ovation from this crowd. Say one thing, he's not scared. He's not scared of the big stage, and he's proven that since being a walk on at OU winning a Heisman Trophy and the number one overall pick well and anybody who's followed him through the draft process and then even once he got here to Cleveland just the way that he carries himself he expects to be the guy he carries himself like he's the guy and you'd think that he'd been around these players and in this locker room for five or six years already 
Here's a handoff to Hyde, gets a yard. You know, I had a chance to, to study these young quarterbacks this year when they were going into the draft, and I was impressed with what I saw of Baker Mayfield. His production was better than anyone else's in college. I thought he was the most prepared to come in and play week one. Mayfield is somehow able to stay on his feet, avoid the sack, and get rid of it third and nine. And this is one of the things that he does so well is he's able to navigate the pocket. He's, he's, a, he's a very athletic guy, but you wouldn't know that looking at him and certainly on the measurables, the 40-yard time, he's a 4'8 guy, but he's able to avoid getting sacked. He's very strong in the pocket, keeps his eyes down the field, I think he's got a Romo-like quality. I think Tony was that way and that, you know, he wasn't the most athletic-looking guy, and he didn't run particularly well, but he had an ability to make people miss and make plays, and his accuracy under duress and on the move this is, is awfully good. good. Chris Hubbard is down. Free agent pickup from the Steelers. And one of five players the GM, John Dorsey, has added to this roster we're playing in the playoffs a year ago to infuse some talent on this Cleveland group and there's the injury to Hubbard. Uh, they, you know you look around the league at these offensive linemen and they're just dropping like flies and here Chris Hubbard was a guy who came from Pittsburgh a big acquisition It played for Todd Haley there. He was a swing man in Pittsburgh. He gets his opportunity to come here and start at right tackle. That's a good sign to see him walking off the field, but tell you, both these coaches are just holding their breath, hoping to get through this game. Next week, of course, we know that most of these guys won't play at all. They got to get through this one, get some work in, and yet keep them upright. Greg Robinson, a former number two overall pick of the Rams, and that pick didn't work out at all. Now he's trying to be the swing tackle here for Cleveland. He takes over. Mayfield on third and nine throws first down caught at midfield passes caught by Higgins and good zip on the football by Mayfield completion of 20 yards. Well these are the types of throws that he's capable of throwing. He's got a strong arm so he's throwing the ball to the sideline from the middle of the field basically left hash. It's a long throw and he's having to navigate an underneath defender Sidney Jones. You got to lay it over the top of him, still have enough on the ball to drive it to the outside on the comeback. That's well done. Survived a big hit at the end of it. 20 yards on third and nine. Broken play. Mayfield able to get around the edge and then just hops out of bounds. And hops out of bounds with Jalen Mills right there to force him out a gain of one. And I will say this, Joe, that when you when the coaches talk about Tyrod Taylor what they liked about him was the guy simply protects the football he doesn't turn it over he doesn't fumble it he doesn't throw interceptions well you can say and I know that that's college but you can say the same thing about Baker Mayfield he didn't throw a lot of interceptions in college either now can he keep doing that in the pros time will tell but he's very smart with the football or at least he's shown that ability at the collegiate level Second and nine, screen is set up for Darren Fells, and that goes backward a yard and a half. So third and long again. I like what you told Baker before the game down on the field. You, you did study these guys because you worked the draft. Would you tell number six? No, what I told him is I, I think he's going to have a great career. I, I really do. I, I believe in him. I like his moxie. And I said what I like most about him is that even though in college he did put up big numbers, he won the Heisman Trophy for crying out loud, I think he's just about winning football games and getting the ball into the end zone. However that happens and whatever it looks like is of no importance to him. Mayfield looking for somewhere to go with it. And there's nowhere to go. Stepped out before the first down. They're going to mark him out at the 39, a gain of six. And the Browns look like they're going to go for it again. Well, it's really good coverage by the Eagles defensively. And, and Baker, you know, had, a, had enough time in order to try to find somebody. There just simply wasn't anybody there. They're locked up in man coverage. And Baker pulls it down, always looking to throw the ball. And, and for a lot of young guys, that doesn't happen all the time. It didn't happen for me. 
You know, you get confused and you start scrambling around and you tuck it, you run. And he has shown that he's looking to throw the ball already in his young career. On fourth down, in trouble again. Flag is down. And it looks like in the area of a hold. That's what Chris Long thinks. Yeah, they got Greg Robinson, it oh, looks like, at right tackle. Offense, number 78. The penalty declined. The result of the play, first down, Philadelphia. So those are former teammates and former number two overall picks by the St. Louis Rams. Yeah, how about that? You know, this guy's a talented guy. Greg Robinson, and, and you said it a minute ago, that they're hoping somebody in that offensive line will emerge as their sixth guy. And he just gets lazy with his feet, he grabs him. That's a penalty. We're going to work Mike Pereira into this series to talk about the topic that is top of mind. So many people in the NFL, this new use of the helmet rule. Here's a screen, and that's knocked down. So second down and 10. All right. So the man in the vest in the middle is our go to man for everything rules and uh, I'll just ask you, you simply in the then, vest. I tried to take it off because you guys won't wear it but I, I would ask you the simple question then we'll dive into it is that new helmet and the use of the helmet rule going to change the way these guys officiate and the way we see football for the rest of time well I think Joe we're already seeing it to tell you the truth as as I watch it this closely there's a handoff to Smallwood, bottled up, third and long coming up. Go ahead, Mike. You know, I like the additional language that they put in yesterday. They haven't changed the rules, but basically they said this, that if it's incidental or inadvertent, then it's not a foul. And I think you gave officials a little bit right to be looser than this. But I think we overreacted because there's only been 51 total penalties called in 33 preseason games, and 11 of them, by the way, were incorrect. So I think it's really not going to be an issue once we get into the regular season. Third pretty down and 10. Pretty crazy rule to begin with, the way that they initially installed it. Falls ball is out. Recovered by the Browns. Ogba came away with the football as it was knocked out of the hand of Nick Foles. Uh, Greg Williams, defensive coordinator, he's awfully excited to see this. Push the pocket, get after the quarterback, and this is the second time now in two weeks that Nick Foles has had the ball knocked out of his hands, and you know, he's got to know when he's got traffic around him that you've got to protect the football better than that. Jannard Avery, who is a rookie fifth-round pick out of hey, Memphis, boy, who Greg hey. Williams, the defensive coordinator, loves, was there to knock it out. Browns have it at the 35. Handoff is to Hyde. He's knocked down near the 30. In fact, Greg Williams said that Jannard Avery is the second best pass rusher on this Browns roster right now. That's saying a lot. You know, it is saying a lot, and, and the best one obviously being Miles Garrett, and it's Vitae again at left tackle. And again, I said he struggled last week, and you've got the rookie, Jannard Avery, who runs right over the top of him. They're expecting a lot of big things out of him. In fact, he said they, they're going to use it. Greg Williams said they're going to use Avery the way that the Broncos use Von Miller as just primarily a pass rusher. Mayfield was looking for the home run and has it knocked out of his hand and then recovered after Fletcher Cox got his hands on it by Chris Hubbard. So Hubbard back in there, and he's there to fall on the fumble, and there's the great Fletcher Cox who made the play. Wow, what a what a, I was gonna say, what a year he's had. He's been he's been a dominant figure ever since they drafted him in the first round out of Mississippi State. That defensive front, they are something, and they're able to get pressure on the quarterback with rushing just four people. One quarter in the books, back after this from your local Fox station. Well, it's great to see Tyrod Taylor back out on the field after getting checked in the locker room. It needs to be seen whether he'll come back into this game. It's third down and 11 for Cleveland. Well, it's a good sign that he has his helmet in his hand. It, it, it appears that he may come back out tonight and get some more playing time. Hey, Brown, 
Cardinal, Brown Cardinal, Brown Cardinal. Hey, Duel. Duel. Hurry, hurry. Quick throw and incomplete for Landry. Go down to the field. Christina, a lot of injuries on your side of the uh, stadium. Well, yeah, the injuries mounting up. Fourth overall pick, Denzel Ward, remains in the locker room. He suffered a back injury in that first quarter. I'm told he's questionable to return. But I was also told Tyrod Taylor was questionable to return. He has an injury to his left hand. Again, they said he was questionable, but he came back out of the locker room. I can tell you, he was in tremendous pain when he went into that blue medical tent. But a good sign that he's back out here with the helmet. Here is a 54-yard try by Gonzalez and he's able to knock it through. He is in a battle with Ross Martin for the job here in Cleveland takes a leg up and it's a five to nothing game. We'll be back in 30 seconds after this from the NFL. the Eagles came into this game talking about trying to get into a rhythm with their number one offense again without their top three running backs without Carson Wentz and we'll get into that story. He worked out before the game looked really good moving around as they try to get him ready for the season opener but no rhythm offensively yet for right. Philadelphia. Well and, and Nick Foles you know he missed all of the preseason last year and I think some within that organization point to that but I'd be a little concerned. I mean, not so much because of Nick, but just the fact that they've had so many key guys that haven't played in the preseason. Guys he will be counting on to throw the football to. Well, this is a guy that they count on to throw the football, Carson Wentz, and this has got to make Eagle fans smile. The way he's moving around. He started camp, was involved in 11 on 11 drills, and they kind of shelved that for a while now he's back into 11 on 11 drills he slips there comes away smiling he's trying to come back inside nine months yeah from that torn ACL and we were yeah. there in uh, week 14 a year ago obviously uh, you know a monumental task to be able to do that I thought the most impressive part of the workout I was standing right behind him watching it was when he did slip you know when you're not controlling your environment yet he got right up and seemed to hold up strong Boy, this Philadelphia offensive line tonight is getting overwhelmed no gain there by Smallwood and here's the injury last year December 10th that dive for the end zone and he was in the MVP conversation when he went down led the league at that moment in touchdown passes still finished second for the year but what the Eagles went on to do with Foles at quarterback was sensational. On second down this is up for grabs and picked. Intercepted by Cleveland and bring in body Calhoun. Mike Wallace the target. And that is two takeaways for this Cleveland defense that was last in that category during the regular season a year ago. You're going to see the range by Brian Body Calhoun there, the, the deep safety, and, and him reading Nick Foles' eyes. He gets a break, and then he's able to get over the top and make a play on this ball. But the Cleveland Browns bring six guys, and you're going to see the back here swing out. Jamie Collins, 51, is supposed to run with him in coverage. He's supposed to peel off that rush. He doesn't. Nick Foles misses it because they brought one more than they could protect. Somehow, Tyrod Taylor, after that, ugly injury is back out there playing he hands to Hyde and Hyde loses four yards I, this is remarkable to think what we saw on the sideline that minutes later he's back in the game yeah, it sure didn't look good when he when he went down and, and I, I think it just 
says that he's got this mentality of a sixth round pick coming into the league and he knows what's in front of him and he doesn't want to give any give up any opportunity. Second and 14 and now down he goes Nada. An addition from a year ago is in there. In his 13th year and Haloti can still get to the quarterback a loss of seven. Well, that's pressure in the middle. You're going to see the right guard, Spencer Drango, and he's the one who filled in for all world Joe Thomas last year at left tackle. And he's the one who's able to get the, the inside pressure on Tyrod hey, Taylor. Now, third down and 21. Majority of the defense is stacked up back at the 40 of Philadelphia passes underneath and knocked down at midfield is Damian Ratley. It's fourth down and Britton Colquitt will come on to punt. So the Eagles need to figure it out up front with their offensive line. The last three drives have gone safety fumble interception and they're about to get it right back. Colquitt had a good year last year. Averaged over 47 yards a punt. This is Vogel that comes in getting a shot. We saw him with Green Bay last season. A fair catch by DeAndre Carter at the 14. Photo shoots for rookie quarterbacks have changed over the years. This is Baker Mayfield with the live Tiger. And there's Aikman. Hey there. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Hi there. Yeah. Troy Aikman, well, UCLA. Yeah, they, uh, you know, the, the crop top was in <laughs> back then, you know? Would uh, never, would never have taken my shirt off for a photo shoot. Would you have allowed a live tiger to be <laughs> in that shoot? Is the tiger? Well, maybe, oh, yeah, you know, white, yeah, yeah. Hey, white tiger, that's cool. I mean, I would have gone along with that. Here's Foles out on the edge. Pass is caught by Mike Wallace who has spent a lot of time in the AFC North good for three and not mission accomplished for this offense so far. No it hadn't been good but if you're Greg Williams you're pretty excited they had a heck of a game last week. You know they, they shut down the offense in that one and I think this this week more than anything is these takeaways. You know they were last in the league creating takeaways and here they they've got two in this first half. Smallwood is swallowed up in the backfield as Kirksey got through. I mean, Greg Williams is one of the coordinators that you talk to, and you know where everybody stands. His players, they know where they all stand with Greg Williams. He doesn't really hide much. And he's got to be really proud with what this group did going into last year and now how they've improved going into 2018 and anyone who's watched hard knocks they know that everyone knows where you stand with Greg Williams <laughs> third down and eight blitz coming he likes to blitz too. pass is caught by DeAndre Carter and there's opportunity here tonight for DeAndre Carter who is getting some work in the slot Nelson Aguilar their usual slot receiver is out with a lower body injury and DeAndre 5'8 190 good for 29 yeah they lose him in coverage he runs the out and up and, and like you said he's been one of those guys who, who has emerged and you know, they like what they've seen tonight's a big opportunity for him and that was a nice play handoff here is to Smallwood He's had two good runs tonight. Knocked down at the 41. That one for 14. And a little traction here for Philly on offense. Yeah, one of the first times they, they've had a, a lane there to run the football. And it's a nice pickup. Running the ball on the what ground. Do want, what do you want, Kel? Yeah. Anna. Another. Smallwood, a nice cutback, and he's got a first down. Knocked out at the 27, 14-yard gain. Well, we've talked about Vitae over there, left tackle, and some of the struggles that he's had in pass protection, but 
This time, Derek Kendrick, the safety, he comes up, and Vitae was able to get a good block on him to secure the edge to allow Smallwood to get it around the corner. This is Jones, and Matt Jones lost it. Oh. Another takeaway as Terrence Mitchell knocked it out. And Ogan Joby comes away with a fumble. And if you're Matt Jones, that, that hurts. Well, Matt Jones had fumbling issues when he was with the Redskins. Fumbled a couple times last week. He's in this battle for the fourth running back spot. He gets hit by Mitchell and puts it right on the ground. Here's a handoff to Hyde. Trying to get around the edge on the right side. And gain of about one. Nigel Bradham on the stop. Yeah, well, you're going to see Terrence Mitchell. He does a good job of working through the block by Gibson and then, and then knocking it out of Matt Jones' hands. And you talk about the fumble problems that he had in Washington. His first two years in Washington, he fumbled the ball eight times. He lost six of those, and he came in initially and looked pretty good. He was productive, and then they couldn't count on him. He had some fumbles last week. He puts the ball on the ground again today. He's in the battle for a roster spot. That doesn't bode well. Here is Hyde able to break loose. Good run here. Depends on where they put it down. Close to first down yardage. Jalen Mills with the tackle, and it looks like they're going to mark him maybe inches short. Third down and inches. What they bring in Darren Fells. He's another one of these tight ends that they got, and look at the way that he peels back and makes a nice block there. Carlos Hyde, I have always liked him from the time he came into the league with San Francisco. Split time early with Frank Gore, but he's a tough player. So's Taylor. He's proven that tonight. And he slides with a first down. Gain of four. Don't miss the Big Three Championship live on Fox. Chris Anderson and Power will meet Drew Gooden and Three's Company on the half court in Brooklyn to battle the Julius Irving Championship Trophy. Catch all the action tomorrow night live starting at 8 Eastern on Fox or stream it live on the Fox Sports app. What Play action. Taylor hangs in. Time runs out. Nice move out on the edge and another to turn it into a positive play. Camus Grugier Hill made the tackle. Joe, you think about Hugh Jackson and then general manager John Dorsey. And we got Fletcher Cox. He, he's getting a little attention back there now, too, but there's. Hugh Jackson and, and you know they said a few weeks ago there is no plan B there is no plan C plan C is getting Baker Mayfield onto the field and all of a sudden you have Tyrod Taylor who had looked was pretty serious well they almost they were almost looking at plan Z heading into next week from the moment they got him the Browns have been consistent saying that Tyrod Taylor is our quarterback and Baker Mayfield will sit and learn. Duke Johnson carries it gets one. Carson Wentz was supposed to be a sit and learn guy when they drafted him number two overall by the way with the Browns pick back in 2016 but he looks so good. He leapfrogged over Chase Daniel and forced a trade of Sam Bradford to the Vikings. And still he came right in and played. Yeah, still one of the great trades by Howie Roseman. And, and getting back one of those first round picks from Minnesota. Here's a blitz and they come right through. Hicks. Back in middle linebacker. And a loss of 11 to bring up fourth down, and it's good to see Jordan Hicks making well, a play. Duke Johnson, he's in there on third down. He's the third down back, and, and Jordan Hicks hits it right here. Well, you got to take the most dangerous, but he's looking over here the entire way, and you see how Jordan Hicks hits it and gets right past Duke Johnson to the quarterback. This is Cole Quick. And a fair catch called for by DeAndre Carter. From that umpire cam, 
And a good look at that sack, and so do you. Browns lead by five. Well, we haven't seen serious injury yet. The only player that's been ruled out is Denzel Ward, who was able to get up after an early injury. Here's a fake handoff from Foles. Dropped off to Smallwood. And Smallwood gets two. Here's some sound courtesy of NFL Films from tonight. Let's go! Make a statement! Hit on three! One, two, three! Hit! Hit. You got a rage back to the ball right there, and you got your catch, okay? Showing Short, the throw. Scoop and score, nigga! Go score! Put nobody around you! Take your ball back! That's how you stand up! Our thanks to NFL Films. That was Gunter Brewer, by the way, in the middle, the wide receivers coach for Philadelphia, talking to his group. Second down and eight. Foles passes caught. Tight end Ertz, first down. Working on Jabril Peppers. And a gain of 10. Of course, Zach Ertz, a, a Pro Bowl player last year for the for the first time, and that tight end room changed a little bit from where it was last year. They had, of course, Brent Selleck, primarily the blocking tight end for them, and then Trey Burton, who Eagles fans will never forget on the Philly special and the throw that he made, but he would step in there for Zach Ertz when he was down, and he'd play big, and now, of course, they bring in Dallas Goddard, their second-round pick out of South Dakota State, and Richard Rodgers, a bigger tight end group than what they've had. Falls out to his left, finds a receiver, and hits Gibson. And Gibson has had a terrific preseason in camp, 21-yard completion. Well, Gibson on this play, he, he does an excellent job of recognizing zone coverage. Quarterback is scrambling to his side, and he just throttles down and sits right in the hole and gives, gives Foles a chance to put the ball on. There's Carson Wentz watching it all. While Nick Foles has gone from a pro bowler with Philly to almost quitting the game, Kansas City back with Andy Reid. Right now, dumped to the ground back near the 45 on first down. Another sack, Miles Garrett. Is he a handful or what? But I don't know that we've well, it, seen anybody do what Nick Foles has done over the past calendar year, but now we talk about Garrett. Well, yeah, Miles Garrett, the bull rush right into the chest. He gets into the chest of Vitae, and you see that it's a mismatch. He gets him off balance, he puts him on his back, then he's got a straight shot to the quarterback, and it, it's, I haven't seen Vitae struggle like this the last two weeks, you know, since his rookie year when he stepped in. And he's been pretty solid, but his technique just is not very good. And right now, it's a good thing that Jason Peters is going to be back. And now they're going to take a look at Vitae after he just got railroaded. Browns have three sacks. Vitae has been getting worked over, and now he's a little woozy going over to the sideline. We'll see if they pop up that blue tent and look at him inside there. Hey, this Miles Garrett, he is he is something else. And like you said earlier, you see he's Garrett's able to get his hands in on Vitae and have his way. But boy, are they expecting even bigger things this year from him. Here is a pass caught by Carter, and he shows some speed, gets flipped for a first down. And DeAndre Carter trying to make a name for himself. Well, get Zach Ertz out there and Lane Johnson, and you can do those types of things when you have an athletic right tackle and pretty good lane then for him. And that's a that's a big first down pickup. Holes over the middle, pass caught by Smallwood. He's got another first down. So Nick Foles signs a two-year deal, gets a chance has the highest postseason completion percentage in any postseason in NFL history is Super Bowl MVP and you see that quote he is a humble guy a grounded guy and willing to play out this second year of his two year deal Smallwood 
has been impressive. He gets 10. Could there be, be a better backup for Carson no. Wentz? I mean, it, it, it really is remarkable. Wentz handled it so well at the end of last year. Not easy to do when you're out of the lineup and you see your team go on and have success. But Nick Foles, he and Trent Dilfer are the only two guys I know who have won a Super Bowl and come back the next year as backups. Two minute warning. Coming up, it's the Toyota halftime. Michael Terry and Howie will be in the studio in New York. Terry will talk about what we've seen tonight from Baker Mayfield. And they'll talk about which quarterback will own his new home. The Eagles set up in a good spot here. First and goal from the six, and by far their best drive they've put together. <laughs> I'm confused. Are we saying that a quarterback in today's game cannot afford to own his new home? I don't think it has anything to do with like a house. <laughs> I understand. I think it has to do with, you know, a new stadium, a new destination, a new spot. Well, I think that's going to be Josh Allen, and I believe it's going to be Sam Darnold. From the six. Hand off to Smallwood, and he is swallowed up and a loss on the play. Well, you look at this right now, Joe and, and Greg Williams, and these guys likely won't play in the second half. And the struggles that the Cleveland Browns had last year in the red zone, they were last in the NFL. They just simply could not stop people down here in the red zone and keep them from getting into the end zone. And so this is a good opportunity now as we wind down this second quarter to see if they can make a big stop here. Second and goal. Foles is picked. Intercepted by Jamie Collins. Another turnover by this Philadelphia offense. And not a good throw from Foles. No, and how about Jamie Collins, a guy who missed 10 games last year, coming off a pretty significant knee injury. And, and he's reading Foles. He drops back. And you see Foles is trying to fit the ball in behind him. And just no chance. And, and Foles has to see that. I mean, there's no opportunity right there with Ertz working in that direction and Jamie Collins out in front. But you still got to make the play, and Collins is able to catch the football. And that's a good sign. Now, can they carry it over into the regular season? The stop in the red zone, but I, I think the bigger point is the turnovers, the takeaways that they've created defensively here in this first half. Pass to the sideline and Higgins is there for the catch. Good throw by Taylor. And then on the other side, you want to call it a takeaway or a giveaway? That's four straight turnovers by Philadelphia. Well, that's right. And, and, and hey, I, you know, I've won a Super Bowl. I know what it's like to come back the following year and you feel good about yourself. You go on book tours, Nick Foles did, Doug Peterson did. All that's great. And then you get back into camp and, you know, you got to then put in the work. And, a lot of guys banged up. A lot of guys aren't playing. Duke Johnson is serenaded with a first down run. The offense didn't look good last week, and, and they they obviously don't look good here today, and, and they likely won't play next week. And, yeah, you'll say all the right things, but then you go into that opener against the Falcons on primetime television, and you have some doubts. Here's Landry with a catch and a throw from Tyrod Taylor up to the 35, a gain of eight. And a timeout is taken by the Browns. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you can justify just about anything with what you say after the game. But I, I have found Doug Peterson to be a very honest guy. And, and I think Doug Peterson will come out of this uh, talking about this number one offense now granted they're missing a lot of pieces right but he can't be happy with that last decision by Foles and the way the offensive line is looked. yeah because there's some things that just should not be happening the, the turnovers should not be happening the way in which they have and hey Doug Peterson you know was asked why are you playing Nick Foles he had the shoulder injury in last week's game he says because he needs to play he had played very well he needs to complete some of these passes I'm, I don't think he would play next week, but I, I wouldn't count it out completely either. Landry got behind the secondary. The throw was too deep. 
And now with 42 seconds left, two timeouts, up five to nothing. It's third and two. Landry's been targeted nine times. He's got two catches. Hey, five four, five four. And off inside, and we'll see what progress they give. Duke Johnson is knocked down right at the marker. And no signal, and with time leaving the clock, they finally call timeout. For measurement. Well, the good news, Joe, when you look at this Philadelphia Eagles team and the, and the game here tonight is is this defense, and you know they're continuing to to do the things that that you would expect, and you know they've got their share of injuries as well. You know, with Tim Jernigan, we're not sure exactly when he might be back. Brandon Graham, and you know they're a little banged up, but I think they're going to still be a really good group and one that. This team will be able to hang their hat on week in and week out. Yes, there is a camera with the chain gang. Yes, it was enough for a first down. And yes, we will give you a better look at that next time as you see Duke Johnson just get enough. The guy's been so good catching the football. First running back in NFL history, 50 or more receptions each of his first three years. And now the Browns will use. Timeout number two with 25 seconds left. Yeah, in fact, Duke Johnson, you know, he's talked about he likes running the football. He had a great career at, at Miami, he was the all time leading rusher there. And then he comes to Cleveland and, and he has been exceptional catching the football. And he gets out there and runs wide receiver routes. Of course, led the team last year, as you said. At in receptions, but he gets out there during the week every day and, and runs wide receiver routes. And I'm not so sure that if that was his only position, he wouldn't be awfully good. Taylor throws, sideline pass is caught. And that's Ratley. He gets nine. Good strong throw. Clock is continuing to wind, or at least a few seconds left. Even after Ratley went out of bounds. Stops with 17 seconds. Hey, tight end. Hey, we're going on four seven. Hey, left formation, set, 180. What is that? One timeout left for Cleveland underneath. Pass is caught, and they're going to have to use that timeout right now. That's Najoku. A gain of three for a first down. Did you know that Las Vegas has the Browns at 60 to 1 to win Super Bowl 53, and that's better odds than Atlanta? Jacksonville <laughs> and Kansas City three teams that were in the postseason a year ago. It's pretty crazy stuff. I mean in, in 2015 this franchise won three games in 2016 they won one game and you think OK well it can't get any worse than this right we can only go up from here uh, not so fast <laughs> and then last year they don't win a game and yet when you're walking around the building there is so much excitement that yeah they, you know heck. I'd go play some money on him. What the heck? <laughs> You're not allowed. From midfield, catch is made, and now four seconds remaining. So, to me, that's the hard knocks factor. A little Al bit. Along with Baker Mayfield and the change in personnel, but you fall in love with these guys, and you see that they're real people, and you see that they have wives that are rooting them on, and you see that they're trying to make a roster, and you see a head coach that's <laughs> vulnerable. Yeah. And, these assistants I, that are crazy and in a good way. This 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 team does remind me a little bit, Joe, of of, of our team in Dallas in the early 90s when we started to turn the corner. Now they got to win a game. It's been a long time since they even won a game. Now they got to win the close games to start with, and it would help if they'd win week one. They have, I don't know when they last won a game week one. I mean they've been terrible and they open up against Pittsburgh, but. There's a lot of young pieces in place, and I really think that, that John Dorsey, as we see Jim Haslam, the owner, I think John Dorsey has done a nice job. Now, now he was given a lot of opportunity with all the picks that were acquired, but it's early, like I said before, 
but I like the picks that he made. I like the moves that he's made. This is a different roster, and I think I think it's a talented roster. And I don't and I don't think that that's just simply from you know watching hard knocks. This this team should win. They should show noticeable improvement. I don't know if they're going to be playoff contenders, but they should be much, much better and win some games. Here's Landry underneath looking for blocks. Won't get anywhere close. And the half is over, and the score is 5 to nothing, Cleveland. At the half, just for the record, Aikman's not betting on any team. I don't want to break a new guy in. Back after this from your local Fox station. It is a five to nothing game with Cleveland on top. Trying to win their second game of this preseason. A welcome to you back into our broadcast booth. I'm Joe Buck. That's Troy Aikman. And uh, to see if uh, Nick Foles comes back out for more work here in this third quarter because the offense for Philadelphia has got to get something to feel good about before they leave town. Yeah, this is like a baseball game. The Indians and the Phillies. That's right. You know, yeah. A 5 0 score here at halftime. And I, I, I don't think we'll see. More of Foles, but you don't. No, I don't. But but who knows? I mean, who knows? He certainly needs we to work. Don't. The offense does, but you know, the turnover is a big problem. But going back to these receivers that they don't have, I mean, that's as much a part of this as well. And you know, both defenses, however, I thought did a did a nice job. And I think the best part for us and our viewing audience is uh, it's uh, time for shake and bake Baker Mayfield. We'll see what he can do. Well, there the numbers are not good. And the offense with Nick here in the preseason. Top three running backs are not available. Jason Peters, the nine time Pro Bowl left tackle, not available. Elshon Jeffrey, not available. And who knows early in the season whether he'll be even able to go. There was a report that he played all of last season with a torn rotator cuff. Nelson Aguilar is unavailable with a lower body injury. And those missed players. Well, it's added up to not a lot of action for this Eagles offense. Not just tonight. DeAndre Carter takes a knee. Let's go down to the field. Hello, Aaron. Hello. You mentioned in the first half, Doug Peterson, an honest guy. He was very candid coming out of the locker room. He said, you want to know what the problem is? He handed me a sheet of paper with all the offenses, all the offense mistakes. I asked him, will we see Nick Foles again? He said, no, I'm done. I've seen enough. I asked Doug Peterson what was wrong with Nick Foles, and he said, I don't know. It's very disappointing. He said he was calm before this game. I thought he'd settle in. Not the case. He said he hopes here for the second half that the offense cleans up these mistakes. Well, there you go. Aaron could have told you. Did she text you that? This is Nate <laughs> Sudfeld. No, but next time she should. Then I'll say it with a little more confidence. <laughs> here is a handoff to Matt Jones getting another try. Fumbled the last time he touched it. I think what's interesting, Joe, though, if if you look at the drives with Nick Foles this preseason, he's had 10 offensive possessions. They've not scored any points, and they've allowed nine points. Gave up a sack fumble touchdown last week, and then, of course, the safety tonight. And I just don't know how you recapture some of that confidence, uh, you know, as they prepare to wind down this preseason and go into week one. Sudfeld is swallowed up and the offensive line for the Eagles still having a tough go as Caleb Brantley got through for the sack and a loss of seven. So we're into the backups and the backups for Cleveland got through for a sack. You got Matt Pryor right here 69 and, and, and they they do like Matt Pryor. He's a young guy he's from TCU and feel like he's done some good things but he's is six seven he's a, he's big at 330 pounds to be inside and you can tell he got up a little bit high and just got pushed back right into Sudfeld now third down and 13 and that pass is incomplete for Dallas Goddard and 
that drive is three and out. Sudfeld is actually Sudfeld has actually played pretty well. They have this preseason, and I can say this as a guy who went to Indiana didn't get a chance to do much <laughs> with the Indiana Hoosiers. <laughs> a lot of handoffs. Who has? Who's the last guy that Shut has up. got the? I tell you what. Speaking of college football, though, oh, not to go off go. on a tangent, but I've, I say it each year, but I really mean it this year. If you want on the UCLA bandwagon and Chip Kelly, now's the time. Okay. Noted. Thanks. <laughs> Justin to punt. Are you going to bet on them too? Can I? <laughs> no! <laughs> There's Damari Scott put it on the ground and now gets it just across the 25. Troy's being let out in handcuffs. The Browns have it for the first time in the second half up five. Well a lot to talk about with Josh Gordon. And as far as we know there haven't been any members of the media that have had a chance to speak with Josh since his return this past weekend to Cleveland except Christina Pink. Here is a handoff to Nick Chubb. And let's send it down to Christina. What'd you learn from uh, Josh Gordon. Well, yeah, talking to him before the game, he is certainly rejuvenated about his return, currently on the non-football injury list, but hopeful to return for week one. But whenever he returns, he will not be a starter. Hugh Jackson told us that when I talked to Gordon, he said, that's the right thing to do. I come back with no sense of entitlement. He said, I understand that decision. He's in good condition. He's been certainly engaged with his teammates and the young receivers throughout the game, guys. Here's Nick Chubb, and he goes nowhere. He was all pro. Talking about Josh Gordon uh, in 2013, he had over 1,600 receiving yards. He's big, he's strong, he's fast, but basically has been suspended for multiple violations of the NFL's drug policy for the better part of the last three years, and then didn't go to camp. Kind of surprised everybody by tweeting that he would not be in Cleveland at the start of camp and went down to Florida to seek further treatment and so it's all kind of shrouded with mystery as to a what he went to get checked out for and B what kind of uh, condition he is in football wise and, and really health wise coming back. Yeah a lot of questions of course even by those that are in the know within the organization and, and even if he is able to come back week one you know when you're talking about his history you just don't know for how long he'll be with the team. It's hard. It's hard on the staff. It's hard to game plan around that. If he comes back as the player he's been, he'll be back to start real soon, though. Graham makes a play off the edge on Nick Chubb after a completion to C.J. Board from Baker Mayfield, a loss of two, so second down and 12. But if you get Josh Gordon back and he's okay and looks like Josh Gordon from a couple of years ago and he ended the year last year active for the Browns. You've got Jarvis Landry, Josh Gordon, they love Richard Higgins, Antonio Callaway was a guy that yeah. fell to them because of off the field trouble that he had at Florida. I mean, it's a good group. Well, Here's a catch on the edge by C.J. Board. Not much. It, it is. It is a good group, and, and and a big part of that is, of course, is is Josh Gordon's health and, and and him coming back and being part of this team and and being the player that we know that he's capable of being. And and, and I do like the rookie Antonio Callaway, and and then of course they brought in Des Bryant last week, and and he left without a contract. And is is that now tabled? I'm not so sure. I mean, I don't know what Des Bryant's expectations are, but. I, I would necessarily rule that out. Now, can he fit in if he's not necessarily the go-to guy? I think that's the better question. Here's a catch by Willies. Derek Willies was looking for some blocks to get a first down and cannot pick up enough yardage. Got seven, so it's fourth down. I do think, though, you know, Joe. Sorry, when you when you talk about the Browns offensively, they. They ran the ball pretty well last year. You know, as far as yards per carry average, and they just didn't get to run the ball very often, but that's going to be a key for them. Yes, they want to be able to throw the ball and all that, but running the ball and, and 
protecting the football is going to be key. That was Vogel with a punt. DeAndre Carter making more of this opportunity here tonight, week three of the preseason. And Vogel, the punter there to knock him out, but a good return for DeAndre Carter. He can scoot. Five nothing Browns. Well, when you win a Super Bowl, you get to write a book. Doug Peterson came out with his. Nick Foles with his. It was definitely a remarkable journey for both. Validation for Doug Peterson as a head coach and for Nick Foles as a quarterback. So good in that Super Bowl, so good in the postseason a year ago. This is Matt Jones who makes a spinning catch. And a gain of four BJ Bello out there to make the stop. Well, I do think that Doug Peterson was fearless. You know, when he got hired, there were a lot of critics out there, and he went for it a lot on fourth down more than anybody in football. And and I think the critics then, when they went seven and nine, they piled on and said, hey, maybe this guy's in over his head, but he continued to stick with what he believed. And those decisions to go for it on fourth down, certainly in the Super Bowl, but they happened throughout the year. Is a big reason why they came out as world champions. And I, I, Joe, I think the rest of the league is looking at that, and I, you know, the, when they get to the 40-yard line, their own 40-yard line, there is a 50% chance that they are going to go for it on fourth down. That's what the numbers show, has shown over the last two years. The league average is 15%. Now. We talked about betting earlier. I bet a lot that we're going to see that average go up considerably after what we saw from the Eagles last year. So Matt Jones able to hang on and get the first down, and this is an incompletion to Richard Davis. Meanwhile, I want to set this up right. Philly special. Listen to Foles on the sideline in the Super Bowl. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Philly special. Ready? Well, here's the play, and you caught this last night on the tape. I don't know how much it's been talked about, but it was Nick Foles who was the one that went over there and suggested it. Meanwhile, Sudfeld on second down, forced out to his right, throws back across the field and incomplete. Well, there's Richard a lot. Davis. There's a lot to that that got my attention. First of all, Nick Foles, but then Doug Peterson. You'd have thought it was a preseason game, and here it is, the Super Bowl. He says, "Yeah, okay, Philly special," and so that was number one. Number two, Trey Burton. I know he was a quarterback in high school. On that stage, to throw the ball as accurate as he as he did, very impressive. And then for Nick Foles to make the catch. I mean, even though it's right there, it, it's not easy to do. I mean, there was a lot to that play, and ultimately. That's what allowed him to win the Super Bowl. That was on fourth down going in the end of the first half. Instead of taking the chip shot field goal, they put the pedal down. Big reason why they won. Here's one down the sideline and incomplete. Gibson was the target with McKinnon in coverage. And time for a Philly punt. The 79 combined points that the Eagles put up between the championship game and the Super Bowl, the fourth most by any team in the Super Bowl era. 38 to 7 over the Vikings, 41 to 33 over the Patriots. And it was fun to watch. That sure was. Damari Scott is waiting for the punt. And that's well done. Cameron Johnston now the punter in Philadelphia good punt Philly Philly Doug Peterson Nick Foles not scared and the Eagles won it all in February but now it's a new day for the fan new day for Fox <laughs> Thing, always having this in here, I think. I think helps. You know, when you always got this, you always know how much time there is and what the score is. We celebrate our 25th season of covering the NFL and what was once Fox Sport. Brought on the air by the great Terry Bradshaw and then game coverage anchored by the best to ever do it, not just John Madden, but the late great Pat Summerall. Handoff here is to Nick Chubb, a gain of three. 
I'm telling you, I, I was a 25 standing in Soldier Field on opening day in 1994. I had no idea what the heck I was doing. Probably still don't. But when <laughs> Terry came on with that, and we knew that John Madden was at the top of the pecking order, gave everybody confidence at this upstart network covering the NFL. What a play off the edge as Nick Chubb got hit and hit hard. And the play was made by Josh Sweat. And they like him. And he just showed why. Yeah, they sure did. I mean, he shot underneath. And he's got some great speed. He's a heck of an athlete. He's 4 5. And as Jim Schwartz says, he's an absolute rocket ship. And, and the rocket ship flew right by Greg Robinson. The right tackle. He didn't even hardly get out of his stance. I mean, Chubbs had no chance on the last two runs. So third down and seven for Mayfield and Baker throws good throw good catch first down Derek Willies and on third down a 19 yard completion. Well uh, this shows you the arm strength that he has and this is really what sold the Browns on Baker Mayfield when they worked him out they knew his production in college but when they saw him there in Norman during his pro day he's throwing from the wide hash across the field and. There's quite simply some guys who have a hard time making that throw and Mayfield he's got plenty of arm. I, I'm impressed with him. I said it coming out of the draft. I liked what I saw. I think he's a winner. And I don't think this game is too big for him at all. Handoff here is to the other rookie Nick Chubb and he's got a first down. Watch the quarterbacks as they fly by. Brown season opening quarterback since 1999. Detmer Couch, Holcomb, Garcia, Dilfer, Fry, Anderson, Quinn, Delhomme, McCoy, Whedon, Hoyer, McCown, RG3, Deshaun Kaiser a year ago. Unreal. Packers have had basically two since then in any game. Forget opening day. With Favre and Rodgers, here's Chubb. He has stood up with no game. Well, Joe, you, you you show all the quarterbacks that have come through here, and and immediately you say, well, no wonder there's been no consistency around here for so long. And on top of that, the last three first-round quarterbacks that they have drafted haven't even made it to the end of their rookie contracts. And you know. I, I, I do not think that's going to be the case with Baker Mayfield. I think he's going to have a, a really outstanding career. But you talk about busting on that position when you can't even get a guy to the end of his rookie deal. Here is a nice catch by Jeff Janis, the former Packer, on a quick slant from Mayfield and a gain of five. It'll be third down. How about all the first round picks that they've had in the yeah. last however many years that aren't even on the roster? I mean, they don't have a first round pick on the roster from what, 2009 to 2016 or something after they let yeah. the receiver go this past week. And they traded Corey Coleman up to Buffalo for a future seventh round pick. And with that, none of their top draft picks since 2010 are still with a team. Here's a flag for interference. Janice working against Rasul Douglas. And it's against Douglas. Now we'll take a look and Rasul Douglas has gotten a lot of opportunity to push there. I don't know that I like it that much but he did extend his arms and he gets the call but Baker Mayfield had a free That's rusher right in his face and he hung in there strong to deliver the ball. Five to foul automatic. First down. You can see a little game up here, and they get right in to Baker Mayfield's lap. Well, I was the outside defender with the twist. Thank you. We had one accepted penalty before that one. Don't let that scare Mike Pereira away. We need him here, especially on Thursday. Here's Nick Chubb. College football is back Labor Day weekend on FS1. Catch three great matchups, including Heisman, Hopeful, Bryce Love, and Stanford hosting San Diego State. Also, Texas looks to avenge last year's upset against Maryland. Three days of football starting next Thursday on FS1. We'll stream all the action live on the Fox Sports app. Hey, are you through? Yeah, I'm through. Hey. Scissors. 180. Second and nine. Chubb. 
man overwhelmed by this eagle front and Joe Ostman was one of many to get through. They're trying to pull Austin Corbett number 63 and and he's a little late to the punch and they get penetration into the backfield and you know these running backs last week Carlos Hyde he did a nice job he was able to bust out some pretty good gains but week one he was bottled up there wasn't much room for him to run and, and tonight Nick Chubb hasn't had much room himself he said one good run tonight Hyde a couple third down and 16 Mayfield scrambling for his life again back there and brought down from behind and a good play by Winston Craig as we say every preseason if it's not with the Eagles they're putting things on tape for other organizations to look at yeah and I, and I think that's the thing that Baker Mayfield is going to going to get used to like I said he's only a 4 8 40 guy so he's not going to outrun a lot of people but he's not accustomed to guys like this being able to tackle him at the collegiate level and I remember my first time I played against the Philadelphia Eagles as a rookie and Reggie White got through the middle and chased me as I'm running away from the sidelines and college you just kind of run and you throw the ball you don't even worry about it. Reggie got me from behind. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I remember thinking 280 pounds or whatever he weighs and he's faster than I am. This is this is not good for me. There is a good punt. Tap down inside the five by Damari Scott. 34 yard punt. Back to First Energy Stadium. It's been a four turnover game for Philadelphia. World champ still trying to work out the kinks. Nick Foles' night is finished. They're hoping that Carson Wentz is ready for week one. But that is a medical decision, not the decision of Doug Peterson or Carson Wentz at this point. Here's Josh Adams. They like him, and he's got a chance. Undrafted from Notre Dame and a carry of seven. So we've talked about Wendell Smallwood. We've seen a fumble from Matt Jones. I thought Smallwood looked good, and now we'll see some of Josh Adams. See what he can do. Well, yeah, like we talked about, Matt Jones, of course, putting the ball on the ground, and Smallwood, and, and, and now Josh Adams. To, you know, one of those guys is is going to the top three guys are set, and you know, no one really has has emerged too much. Although, like I said, I think Smallwood has done some good things tonight. I think he'll be the guy who they end up keeping. Adams nowhere to go. Let's look at some of those turnovers tonight by Philadelphia. Yeah, really some fundamental things here by Nick Foles. He does not hold the safety. Once he gets on the hash, he's in range to make a play on any deep ball up the sidelines, yet Foles doesn't make him hold his ground, and he makes an easy interception. You come back on that, pressure inside, forces Foles out, but you've got to see that window and who has coverage out in front, and just a couple simple things, and I know Foles is not happy with that because you know he obviously has played a lot of football and, and, and knows that those shouldn't have happened. 13 of 17 127 two picks Sudfeld in trouble well played. Dropped it off to Adams and the play is made by linebacker James Burgess Junior another guy on the list they like and he closed in a hurry. They sure did he had a he had a clean shot and trying to screen it off of him and he gets right into Nate Sudfeld and you know, I will say going back to Nick Foles and this offense and their struggles it, it, there is something to be said for this next week and as they get ready for week one that hey we've been without our key receivers we've been without running backs that we're going to be depending on we'll be just fine and I think you try to find some comfort in that and over end punt with Scott Hauling it in, staying upright, and he got smacked. Rick Lovato, who's the long snapper, downfield to make the hit, and it was a big one. Six yard return. And by the way, when you think about that position for Philadelphia, it makes us think about our good friend John Dornboss, yeah. who has been through a lot. Got a ring from Jeffrey Lurie, the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles, had been traded to New Orleans. 
Found out he needed emergency heart surgery. It's going to be a long road back for John, but he's got a lot of support in this organization. Great piece by Zach Berman of the Philadelphia Inquirer this past week. And uh, if he's watching, hi, John. We miss seeing you, and he is a really talented special guy. Yeah, he sure is, and, and I'm, I bet he is watching. He, he bleeds green and, and loves this Eagles organization. And, he got married a year ago, and I uh, just saw where he's going to be performing, doing his magic act, and doing a lot of great things. Let's go to the fourth. Back after this from your local Fox station. I don't think the defense for Cleveland's got to be thrilled with the way they've played, not just the starters either. You've been night in Cleveland, Ohio. Jose Ramirez has gone deep. And the Indians lead the Phillies five to nothing. As we just got through the seventh inning stretch. Second and nine blitz coming from Philadelphia. Mayfield fires, pass is caught. Good throw and a good catch by C.J. Board. 20 yard completion and that was fit in there well. Well this guy was a 70 percent passer at Oklahoma and he threads a needle right here. I mean this is the skinny post and you got to throw this ball with great accuracy pretty good coverage too that was a heck of a catch with board with the defender had having his hand in there but he's he sticks it on him perfectly and that's a big time throw so now first down here's Chubb makes one man miss cuts back and turns what was nothing into a five yard gain they call it club rehab, Aaron Andrews in Philadelphia. Yeah, not exactly club med. Of course, we've been talking about all those injuries. Wentz, Marigos, Peters, Hicks, Sproles, all five of those guys, you know, going down within 11 weeks of each other. They all train together. They all rehab together. Darren Sproles telling me tonight, really emotional support for one another. Marigos, apparently an incredible DJ during their training session. Sproles saying, biggest thing, they were there for each other during the Super Bowl, which was bittersweet for all of them. Second down and five, Mayfield is brought down, Stephen Means. Talk about a close-knit group. Stephen Means is beloved on this team. He watches film of the opposition's defenses and tries to give his own tackles looks during the practice week of what they're going to face that Sunday. They love this guy. They do, and, and those guys are really valuable. You know, there's always a few of those guys within a locker room that you don't always hear a lot from on game day, but mean so much to the success and the preparation during the course of the week. And he's certainly been one of those guys. Third down and nine. Mayfield just gets rid of it. And a flag, a late flag. And the secondary. And it's a hold, which will be an automatic first down for the Browns. Hold. Defense, number 35. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. It's DJ Killings, an extra corner, first year player from Central Florida, who gives Cleveland a first down. Well, they get him on the hold. One thing that we've not talked about is, is they are putting an emphasis on illegal contact this year and it's the third time they've done that in the last 15 years scoring's been down the last two years passing yards have been down the last two years the league wants to see that pick back up and expect to see a lot of flags thrown this year for illegal contact here is a handoff to Chubb and a full head of steam for the guy who is number two on the all-time list behind Herschel Walker at Georgia gets five Mike Pereira is with us, and uh, while they hurry up, we'll save it for one play, second and five. Let's try it again with Chubb, and he gets a yard. That's something I know, Mike, that caught your attention, the illegal contact and the difference when they make that a point of emphasis. Well, you just got to go back four years and look. They called 148 four years ago and only 38 last year. And the competition committee always gets concerned when passing yards go down and points go down. And that's happened for two years in a row. And that's why this, to me, is a major point of emphasis. We'll see it probably climb back up to that 100 mark uh, this season. Well, we'll all be excited to see that. Third down and four. A one on one up top if he wants it. Mayfield throws and he's picked. 
Back the other way on the interception. That's Avante Maddox. And the rookies had a good camp. Mayfield throws an interception. As that drive comes to a halt. And then Mayfield got a hit at the end of the play. Twice. The interception ends the drive. Ugly hit. Derek Willies is right here. He's going to be running a crossing route. Then you got Avante Maddox, the rookie. He's in man coverage. We'll take a look at Nathan Gary and what he does then to Willies as he comes across and he jams him. And Mayfield is expecting him to continue to run unimpeded. And that's where Maddox is then able to make the interception. So good play on his part. And this young rookie, fourth round pick out of Pittsburgh, he's in a battle with Sidney. Jones for that nickel slot position he makes a nice play on the ball. Meanwhile, Danny Izechuku, a rookie from Purdue. Here's a sack the other way. That's Chris Smith. But Izechuku delivered the hit on Baker Mayfield, and then Mayfield slammed into Sean Coleman. And I'm sure they're giving him a look over on the sideline. I see that tent is popped up over there for Cleveland. That was uh, an ugly hit. Yeah, and he he has been banged up. Uh, he's been knocked around, uh, you know, a little bit in this game, and he and he was last week too. And not that the number one group has been great, but that's what happens when you come in with behind these reserves late preseason games. Sudfeld misses his target, Josh Adams. This has been a five sack night for this Cleveland defense. So whether it's been Sudfeld or Nick Foles, as you see Stanton now getting loose on the sideline, longtime NFL backup through Stanton, that might lead you to believe they're at the very least going to be cautious with Mayfield, and maybe there's something more to that hit. The Eagles having a tough time keeping their quarterbacks upright. Third down and 11. Here's Adams looking for a cutback. And fighting for a first down. Good run by Adams. Yeah, I can only imagine what Greg Williams is saying right now. Maybe they'll catch that on hard knocks. Third and 11, and you know, they have a chance to come up and make a tackle, and yet he's able to pick up a first down on third and long. It's been confirmed that Baker Mayfield is in that tent on the sideline for Cleveland. After that hit, the tail end of that pick by Avante Maddox. First down. Sudfeld, well protected this time, airs it out. Downfield, it is caught for the touchdown. Rashard Davis somehow got both feet down. 37 yards from Nate Sudfeld. That's a heck of a job by him. We'll take a look and see, but if he's able to get his feet in, it looked initially to me like he was out, but at the end, you know, you're going to see well, that left toe might be on that back line. Here will be a good look at it right here. Once he has possession, yeah, it looks to me like Nate Burleson was hoping that he could talk about the toe drag swag on Good Morning Football in the morning, but it looks like that left foot, the left toe is on the line once he gains possession of the ball. I think Nate Sudfeld agrees. Mike Pereira out of bounds. Hey, Troy, if you want to bet on me, I'm going to say that he's out of bounds <laughs> and it's going to be reversed, reversed to incomplete. <laughs> Can't even get odds on that. I uh, think I'm two for two. <laughs> well, it's a scoring play, so obviously they look at it. And we are in agreement. It's coming back. While we were in break, Jerome Boger made the announcement to the delight of the fans here wearing orange that they're calling that one back. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Rashard Davis did not get both feet down in bounds. So it's second and ten. And off to Adams. Josh Adams is able to move that pile and maybe the Eagles have something in number 33 behind Chance Warmack, and he wasn't alone out in front of that 13 yard run. That was some good tough running there. It looked like Aaron Evans maybe the, the rookie out of Central Florida that was was helping lead the way but some contact kept his legs going and a big game. It's Eagles offensive line has allowed 13 sacks over the last two preseason games. Including five tonight. Sudfeld flagged down incomplete for Carter. Holding defense number 33. Five yard penalty automatic first down. Simeon Thomas is guilty of the hold with that on Shelton Gibson. Yeah, easy call to make. And, and you know, hey, like when we talked to Greg Williams, the front seven, they're pretty good. Now they're relying on some of these young players, as we know. But he said the defense has a chance to be really good, but it all comes down to how good they are in pass coverage. As good as they were against the run, if you cannot play the pass in today's game, you're not going to be very good. And that goes as well if you don't create takeaways. Here's a good play out on the edge. As Greg Ward gets dumped. And the play is made by corner Jeremiah McKinnon. He's made a couple of plays. That's a real good play. He fights through the block. He's able to come up and, and make a tackle. And, and, and I can assure you, if you are going to play corner for Greg Williams, you're going to be willing to stick your head in there and make plays in the run game and when you're forced to make tackles on the perimeter like we just saw. Second down and ten. Sudfeld to the end zone. It's not there. Goddard the target. Some more sounds from our friends at NFL Films tonight in Cleveland. You know, I'll just keep taking double teams for you. You good? You should keep it. <laughs> I, I had I had a couple of brain farts. Okay. Thank God you didn't hear me. He is nothing if not colorful. Former head coach of the Bills, longtime defensive coordinator. Greg with an extra G. Williams. Been doing it a long time. He's a fiery guy, and so is their offensive coordinator, Todd Haley. Here is a pass to Josh Adams. Kind of the alpha dogs with regard to these coordinator. Todd Haley. Hey Troy, how you doing, Todd Haley? <laughs> and then Greg Williams. Haley's been a former head coach, won a division with the Kansas City Chiefs, and an offensive coordinator for the Cardinals, now the Browns, but the Steelers for six years. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's good. good. He's a good offensive coordinator. He's, he did it in Pittsburgh, he did it in Arizona, and he's going to do it here in Cleveland as well and I think Baker Mayfield's fortunate to have a guy like him coaching him fresh into the league. Here is a pull on a 33 yard try and that distance has not been good for Jake Elliott who was so good a year ago. From other distances not in the 30s. Well, Baker Mayfield showing him on the sideline and He's fine. He passed. What test was administered to him on the sideline, we're told. Meanwhile, Jake Kelly had missed from 33 as Drew Stanton takes over at quarterback. Handoff is to Matthew Days. How about a little visit on the sideline? Here's Christina Pink. Thanks a lot. Joined by Jarvis Landry. Jarvis, the first string offense has looked different in every game you guys have played. First, the passing game got going, then the run game. Not much of both tonight. How do you guys find some consistency going forward? 
I'm just trying to find a balance. You know, we want to run the ball a little bit, but we want to do some play action stuff today. And, you know, we took a lot of minus plays early in early downs, and, you know, that's easy for defenses in this league, so it's tough for us. Your uh, speech on hard knocks made you a folk hero, and you've shown a lot of leadership with this team. How did you become that vocal leader so soon with this new club? You know, when I first got here, Coach Hughes just say, be yourself, you know, and, you know, there was a lot of things um, that was already here that, you know, from, from my understanding that needed to kind of be changed or, or talked about or at least said, you know, and um, that was just kind of it, you know, just saying what was the obvious and, you know, hopefully that guys respond to it. All right, thanks a lot. Back to you, Joe All Troy. Right. Yeah, thanks, Christina Jarvis Landry, who led the NFL with his 112 catches a year ago. 400 catches through his first four years. That's the most in NFL history. Stan nares it out. It's not there at all. And the quote that Jarvis Landry had was if we get everyone playing to their potential, we can win the Super Bowl this year. You got to believe, right? You got to believe. And you know what's interesting about Jarvis Landry's year last year? Yeah, he led the league in receptions with 112, but he was 17th in receiving yards of those 112 receptions only six were for 20 yards or more so wasn't much down the field for him last year and they're sure hoping for a lot more big plays from him here in Cleveland Vogel hits a booming punt Rashard Davis on the return 57 yard punt 10 yard return and there's a flag down on the play. Hugh Jackson said this would be the greatest turnaround in sports history. Number 41. Ten yard penalty. Philadelphia keeps the ball. If they win the Super Bowl. Is that, is that what you're he wasn't me? that specific. <laughs> Jarvis Landry. A little more specific. I would agree with that if they win the Super Bowl. That would be the greatest turnaround in the history of sports. That's pretty great. That's pretty great. Well, they are great fans here. There's no doubt about that. They had to take a three year time out as the franchise left, went to Baltimore. They kind of just put everything on ice, including the records, and then rebooted in 99 going forward. But picking up the records. Of the Browns of yesteryear, number one rusher in franchise history, the great Jim Brown. Passes to Carter. He's made some plays tonight. Little number two has got a first down. College football is back September 1st on Fox. Full day's action for you is Lane Kiffins. Florida Atlantic faces the seventh ranked Oklahoma Sooners. It all starts at 11.30 Eastern on Fox or stream it live on the Fox Sports app. Talk about DeAndre Carter, a late signing, three days into camp, 15, four years, never played in the regular season. Number two, inside receiver down at the bottom, but a handoff here to Matt Jones. Aaron Andrews is still in the house. Hi, Aaron. Over here with Fletcher Cox, Chris Long giving him a hard time. Knock it off, Chris Long, right? Not the way you guys wanted the preseason to go. Heading into next week before you see Atlanta, uh, what's the vibe of this team? I mean, right now, I think, you know, we just, I think the main thing is right now, they're just uh, sticking together in the locker room, uh, not turning on each other, you know, just standing together as a team, you know, knowing, knowing, knowing what God is where we are. Um, you know, obviously, not the preseason that we wanted, but I think when the season here, we got a bunch of players back, and, um, you know, we'll be ready. Good news for you, though. Camp's going well. Your defensive coordinator, Jim Schwartz, giving you a compliment on our conference call, saying this is the fastest. He's seen you. What's up with that? You lost a couple uh, LBs, you told me, right? I mean, I lost a couple pounds, but, you know, um, that's one of the things I wanted to try out and, um, you know, really make sure I can um, sustain a double team, you know, but I can and um, I don't think it's slowing me down. So I'm playing a lot faster and, you know, I'm enjoying it. How excited are you about this defensive line? You guys have made some additions in the offseason. What are, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, Ed, Mike, Ed, Helody is, 
it's great. You know, you add, you know, a lot of depth, you know, even more depth than we already got. Um, I mean, adding Mike is, it's, 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 it's going to be a problem because, you know, us on the field at the same time, you know, the way we sub to keep guys fresh, I'm really excited to see, you know, how it's going to go during the regular season. Hello, to man. He's just, he's a seasoned vet. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that I still ask questions, you know, how he, the way he do things and, uh, you know, he's great to the room. Yeah, Michael Bennett telling me before the game he's going to get more sacks this year than he had last year. Yeah, I mean, just from practice, man, the way that we do things. And, you know, once we get on that, for sure, you know, it's everybody the same page. It's me just learning how Mike Rush and how Haloti plays. It's, it's going to be really good for us. All right, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Joe. All right, Aaron, a lot of depth on that defensive line. Howie Roseman has really stacked the deck up front for Jim Schwartz. Daniel Equale. By the way, had a sack on that last possession. Six sacks given up by the Eagles tonight. Sunday on Fox, the NFL preseason continues. A.J. Green and the Bengals take on Josh Allen. The Buffalo Bills kickoff is Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on Fox. To stream it live on the Fox Sports app. That was at his pro day there in Wyoming. And, and Joe, I've never seen in all my years of watching quarterbacks, I've never seen a guy throw the ball further than <laughs> he did. He threw one. About 85 yards. As strong of an arm is as I've witnessed, and that's not his problem. His problem is is that he misses a lot of the easy underneath throws, and his accuracy has to improve. And as I talked about at the time when he was drafted by the Bills, I've seen a lot of guys come into the league, and, and I just don't know that you can really coach accuracy. I'll be interested to see how he does. But he is getting the start this week and a real good chance he may get the start week one. And he'll be along with some of these other young guns that are in the league right now in their first year. Their careers are going to be fun to watch. It's it's not the class of 83 at least yet, but it's going to be fun to follow them and see if they can match them. Couple of carries here for a first down. Dontrell Hilliard. Here are the first round quarterbacks from this past draft. Obviously Baker Mayfield who we have seen here tonight. Sam Darnold third overall. Love the pick. Josh Allen. Meaning the pick sure. Josh Allen seventh to the Bills. Josh Rosen tenth to the Cardinals. Lamar Jackson 32nd to the Ravens as they traded back in and out of Louisville the 2016 Heisman Trophy winner yeah, well going into the draft I thought Sam Darnold was the best of the bunch and I thought the safe pick for Cleveland considering how badly they have drafted that was the safe pick for them to make but they went out took some risks and drafted Baker Mayfield and I think what Jimmy Johnson always said was hey you can play it safe and be good or you can take a chance and be great and there's no question that John Dorsey he took a chance on Baker Mayfield as much as I like him there's not many guys six foot that have had success in this league now I know the game has changed but they have a chance to be really special with this young man if he turns out to be the guy that they think that he's capable of we'll be back in 30 seconds after this from the big three Tomorrow night on Fox. The Big Three Championship is live in prime time. Oh my goodness! With everything on the line, these NBA legends look to lead their team in one final showdown. That boy got good! Chris Anderson in the power. Take on Drew Gooden and Three's company. We're gonna play intensity. The Big Three Championship, live from Brooklyn. Tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Fox. It's Trey Sullivan who is down for Philadelphia undrafted free agent out of Shepard a year ago and now able to pop up. I, I liked what Hugh Jackson told you about Baker Mayfield not just with his abilities throwing the football and seeing the ball come out of his hand and the way as everybody says now he can spin it and all that but the way the people with the program at OU treated him the way he treated them the way guys rallied around him he could tell the players liked being around him and, and he thought that was a, a big 
factor as to what he could bring here to the Cleveland Browns. I think his personality is a lot like Brett Favre and of course we saw the photograph that he staged <laughs> for the draft but I think there's a looseness about him that the players really enjoy. He impersonated the general manager John Dorsey this week and posted it on social media which I thought was some of Baker Mayfield's best work. I thought it was great and players like that you now so I just he loves to play he loves to compete and now it's just a matter of when will he get his opportunity Philly doesn't want to be shut out here tonight they just spent a timeout with 227 to allow some time Winston Craig just made that last play for the Eagles that's his second good play of the night and there's a look at Todd Haley like we talked about it and, and some of the success that he's had Kurt Warner had some great years with him in Arizona and, and really understands the game and there this offense is going to look different from the one he ran in Pittsburgh there with Antonio Brown and all those players a lot of three wide receivers I think this will be more two tight ends try to run the ball protect the quarterback a little bit but he's going to put them in opportunities to have success I really Two. like his abilities as a coordinator Stanton throws passes caught on third and eight but brought down short of a first down to CJ board I have a question for you as it's now fourth down what if Kurt Warner's first name was Carl <laughs> would he have been as good under well, Todd Haley well then I, if, his, if his first name was Carl I probably would have been giving him all my money instead of Carl Nassib the, the financial you advisor you have made a wise choice there my friend I mean 10 percent return on your money from what I'm gathering I, I want to invest with him and Carl has been a real highlight on this, on this hard knocks show and I can't wait what he's going to see what he's going to do next how much money did you give him all everything yeah everything I got that's just smart just good business good family <laughs> business <laughs> here is uh, Todd Haley who tried uh, like the inversion table flipped upside down <laughs> look his head's gonna pop off they had they had to tell him how to get out of it. That's the it's one thing to get into one of those. It's another thing yeah. trying to figure out. Been how to there. Get out. Been there, Todd. Hard Knocks is available on HBO Go and HBO Now streaming platforms. It's a great show. Uh, Shannon Furman, a good friend to us at Fox, does such a good job. And she has a great crew around her. It's just it's compelling TV. Yeah, we I think Todd Haley may be going back to the office after this game and hanging upside down after this offensive performance. Five to nothing. <laughs> the guy behind him, Greg Williams, he'll be happy. <laughs> Smile. For the first all time this camp. Yeah. <laughs> Davis will stay away from this punt from Cole quit and it goes into the end zone more on the Browns and that whole hard knock show it's Christina Pink hey Joe well you know there was some concern from the veterans with such a young team that maybe having the hard knocks crew around could be a distraction but when I talked to Hugh Jackson before the game he had an interesting theory on why they've handled it so well he said we've got young guys but because of social media, they all are so used to having that intrusiveness and that invasiveness around them all the time. He said, hey, this is nothing different. Well, it's made a star out of Devin Kajust, a first year tight end for Juice. Stanford. The other juice. There's Devin. Yeah. And that great story with his dad. So good. And then, you know, if you're my family, it's a family event watching this. And my wife, Kappa, she wants to see him make the team after hearing his story. <laughs> yeah, it's like a. Real life soap opera. There's Matt Jones on a screen. So Coppa's a big uh, Kajust fan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we call him Juice. Okay. Around the house. <laughs> Honey, is Juice gonna make the team? <laughs> Second and five. <laughs> One timeout left for Philly. Pass is caught. And that's Goddard, the rookie tight end. They did, the Eagles did a little Al Davis move and jumped in front of the Dallas Cowboys to draft Dallas Goddard. Cowboys were looking for a tight end. They did it with a draft in Dallas, and they got a heck of a player. 6'5, 256 from South Dakota State. Well, they got the best tight end 
you know in the draft and I, I really like him he had a heck of a college career and his ability to go up and make plays on the ball and you know it's an adjustment and Doug Peterson says it has been you know small college and now competing at this level but he, he gives them some things that I think are going to really help him and, and, and he's going to have to produce so you can't be named after the Dallas Cowboys and play for the Eagles and not, and not play some awfully good football. Ed Spita our statistician in the booth is so proud of Philadelphia that they've started a GoFundMe page to try to get him to change his name to Philly. Sudfeld scampering around makes it to the 45 where it will be third down and under 50 to play. We've seen guys change their names to a lot worse. Yeah. Just change his name to Ocho Ocho. <laughs> Sudfeld throws no flag it's fourth down and there's DeAndre Carter the target again with Denzel Rice in coverage man to man and runs with him pretty good but has the right right arm around him a little bit but doesn't redirect him and probably good non call since feet his name I got to say Dave Schwalbe's name our spotter breaks into a sweat every time there's a preseason game and there are two number 47s. <laughs> Freaks out. Play clock at two. Fourth down and five. Sudfeld throws and caught by Carter. And he's out of bounds with a first down, and there's life to get some points for the Eagles yet. It's a great job by Nate Sudfeld. He's got pressure and he's just able to retreat, has enough arm strength to get it out there on fourth and down and keep this drive going. Still give the Eagles a chance here. Sudfeld going in, you know, again, not knowing exactly Carson Wentz's situation as they go into week one, but, you know, he could find himself a play away from being the guy. Sudfeld fires and the pass is out of the reach of Goddard. So two key players gone as Troy talked about earlier Brent Selleck the blocking tight end but not just a blocking tight end. Catch passes as well and, and just a great Philadelphia Eagle in his time Trey Burton's now with the Chicago Bears so Goddard Richard Rodgers. Backup Zach Ertz. And I'll say this for Brent Sell because I may never get another chance to talk about him. He, he may retire. I don't think he has officially yet, but arguably the most unselfish player that I've followed since I got into broadcasting. A guy who caught 90 balls one year, and then lately all he was was a blocking tight end predominantly. Never complained once and just did his job. That sack is going to force. Doug Peterson to use his final timeout and it's B.J. Bello who got through to add another that seven sacks by this Cleveland defense. Well the news that hit yesterday Dallas Cowboys Pro Bowl center Travis Frederick announced that he is suffering from Guillain-Barre syndrome an autoimmune disease. Frederick said he was diagnosed with a disease after exhausted tests conducted over the past few days received treatments over the past 48 hours. Doctors have told Travis that there's no timetable for his return. All of our best to Travis Frederick one of the best in the game a four time Pro Bowl center. Never missed any time in his five year career and just. A phenomenal player phenomenal player and just really an awesome guy and yeah thoughts are with him and we hope to see him back on the field sometime Sudfeld is incomplete on third and 19 after the sack to DeAndre Carter it's fourth down with eight seconds left that basically comes down to this one play this one play Eight seconds this left. This is the uh, fourth down. What was the this, Freddie Mitchell this, fourth this and what? Is, yeah, it was a 22. Come on, Speedy, you know that. This, come on, Speedy. That's when he uh, put on up. the belt. That's right, the people's champ, Fred X, against Green Bay. Fourth and 26. That's what it was. 
We were there. Mike Steve Pack fired that out. Why? Well, he's a Green Bay Packer fan. Fourth down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Game over. Matt Jones made the catch. The Browns go to two and one. The Eagles fall to 0 oh and 3. And I think that man, Hugh Jackson, will walk away a lot more pleased with what he saw tonight than Doug Peterson. Yeah, I believe so. I think that there's some things they did that they could certainly build upon. The Eagles, they're scratching their head a little bit tonight. Back after this in Cleveland to wrap it up.